we illustrate entropy production with some examples. In the first example we will determine the entropy and its change of an ideal gas. If a given amount of ideal gas absorbs the infinitesimal amount of heat Q rev at the temperature T in a reversible change of state, then we can apply the first law of thermodynamics telling us that the differential of the internal energy U of the gas is equal to the infinitesimal amount of heat Q rev minus the infinitesimal amount of work W prime done by the expanding gas. Here the work dW prime is simply equal to the pressure volume work given by the pressure P of the gas times the infinitesimal change in its volume V. Then we can express the absorbed heat dQ rev as the differential of the internal energy U of the gas, plus its pressure P times the differential of its volume V. For the reversible expansion of the gas the second law of thermodynamics tells us that the differential of the entropy S of the gas is equal to the ratio of the infinitesimal amount of heat dQ rev to the temperature T of the gas. By substituting the expression obtained for dQ rev into the, the second law, the infinitesimal change in the entropy S of the gas can be written as the ratio of dU plus P times dV, to T. For an ideal gas of mass M, the infinitesimal change in its internal energy is given by the mass M times the specific heat capacity Cv of the gas for constant volume, times the infinitesimal change in its temperature T. We can also apply the ideal gas law stating that the pressure P times the volume V is equal to the mass M times the specific gas constant Rs of the gas times the temperature T, to express the pressure P of the gas as its mass M times its specific gas constant Rs times its temperature T divided by its volume V. Then the infinitesimal change in the entropy S of the ideal gas is equal to its mass M times the sum of the specific heat capacity Cv times the ratio of the infinitesimal change in the temperature T to the temperature T, and the specific gas constant Rs times the ratio of the infinitesimal change in the volume V to the volume V. Let us suppose that the initial state A and the final state B of the expanding ideal gas are described by the pair volume V1 and temperature T1 and the pair volume V2 and temperature T2 in the temperature versus volume graph. We can compute the difference in the entropy S of the ideal gas between the states B and A by integrating the differential of S along any reversible process between the initial and final states. Since the process is reversible, we can choose any path for the integration to our convenience. When studying entropy production, we saw that it is always useful to study the transformation of the state of an ideal gas along a path in the state space where only one state variable changes. Then we can decompose any reversible process between the two states A and B into the following quasi-static processes. The first process is an isochoric warming of the gas, where we bring the gas from the state A into another state C at the temperature T2 while its volume is held constant and the differential of the volume V of the gas vanishes. The state variables in this intermediate state C are given by the pair V1 and T2. The second process an isothermal expansion where the gas is brought from the intermediate state C into the state B while its temperature T2 is held constant and the differential of the temperature T of the gas is zero. As a result, we can break the integral into two terms, an integral with respect to the entropy along the path between the states A and C, and another integral with respect to the entropy along the path between the states C and B. Since the first process is an isochoric one, we need to integrate the expression obtained for the differential of the entropy S with respect to the temperature T from the temperature T1 to the temperature T2. Evidently, the second term in the parentheses in the expression obtained for the differential of the entropy does not depend on the temperature and it has no contribution to the integral. Similarly, since the second process is an isothermal one, the differential of the entropy S must be integrated with respect to the volume V from the volume V1 to the volume V2 where the first term in the parentheses in the expression obtained for the differential of the entropy has no contribution to the integral. By performing the integration, we conclude that the change in the entropy S of an ideal gas in a reversible transformation of its state from the state A to the state B, is given by its mass M, times the sum of the specific heat capacity Cv of the gas for constant volume, times the natural logarithm of the ratio of its final temperature T2 to its initial temperature T1 and its specific gas constant Rs times the natural logarithm of the ratio of its final volume V2 to its initial volume V1. We can cast this equation in another form if we introduce the specific entropy and volume of the ideal gas. The specific entropy of the gas is defined by the ratio of its entropy S to its mass M, and its SI unit is joule per kilogram Kelvin. Similarly, the specific volume of the gas is given by its volume V over its mass M and its SI unit is cubic meter per kilogram. The specific properties of a thermodynamic system are usually denoted by small letters. 
By applying these definitions, we can write the change in the specific entropy S of an ideal gas as its specific heat Cv times the natural logarithm of the ratio of its final temperature T2 to its initial temperature T1, plus the specific gas constant Rs of the gas times the natural logarithm of the ratio of its final specific volume V2 to its initial specific volume V1. In this formula, the change in entropy is expressed in terms of the pair of temperature and volume and it can also be expressed in terms of the pair of volume and pressure or in terms of the pair of temperature and pressure from the ideal gas law. If the ideal gas law is formulated in terms of the specific volume of the gas, then it states that the pressure P of the gas times its specific volume V is equal to its specific gas constant Rs times its absolute temperature T. Now we express the gas temperature T from the law as the pressure P times the specific volume V over the specific gas constant Rs, and the specific volume V of the gas as the specific gas constant Rs times the temperature T over the pressure P, and substitute these expressions in the fractions in the equation of entropy production. Then the natural logarithm of the ratio of T2 to T1 is equal to the natural logarithm of the ratio of P2 times V2 to P1 times to V1, which can be written as the logarithm of the ratio of P2 to P1 plus the logarithm of the ratio of V2 to V1. Similarly, the natural logarithm of the ratio of V2 to V1 is equal to the natural logarithm of the ratio of T2 times P1 to T1 times to P2, which can be written as the logarithm of the ratio of T2 to T1, minus the logarithm of the ratio of P2 to P1. If we substitute the expression obtained for the logarithm of the ratio of the final and initial temperatures in the right-hand side of the equation of entropy production, then we can state that delta S is equal to Cv times the logarithm of the ratio of P2 to P1, plus the sum of Cv and Rs times the logarithm of the ratio of V2 to V1. Similarly, if we substitute the expression obtained for the logarithm of the ratio of the final and initial specific volumes in the right-hand side of the equation of entropy production, then we can state that delta S is equal to the sum of Cv and Rs times the logarithm of the ratio of T2 to T1, minus Rs times the logarithm of the ratio of P2 to P1. In the last step, we apply Meyer's relation for an ideal gas stating that the difference between the specific heat capacity Cp of the gas at constant pressure and its specific heat capacity Cv at constant volume is equal to its specific gas constant Rs. Since the heat capacity ratio gamma is defined by Cp over Cv, Rs over Cv is equal to gamma minus 1. If we substitute this expression in the equations in the left-hand side, we can summarize the change in the specific entropy of an ideal gas as follows. We saw that if the transformation of the state of an ideal gas consists of an isochoric process and an isothermal process, then the change delta S in the entropy over the specific heat capacity Cv of the gas at constant volume is equal to the natural logarithm of the ratio of the final temperature T2 of the gas to its initial temperature T1, plus the heat capacity ratio gamma plus 1 times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the final specific volume V2 of the gas to its initial specific volume V1. If the transformation of the state of an ideal gas consists of an isochoric process and an isobaric process, then delta S over Cv can be written as the natural logarithm of the ratio of the final pressure P2 of the gas to its initial pressure P1, plus gamma times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the specific volume V2 to the specific volume V1. Finally, if the transformation of the state of an ideal gas consists of an isobaric process and an isothermal process, delta S over Cv is given by gamma times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the temperature T2 to the temperature T1, plus 1 minus gamma times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the pressure P2 to the pressure P1. The entropy formula for an ideal gas also demonstrates the principle of entropy production in the experiment performed by Gay-Lussac and Joule studying the free expansion of air. We already discussed this experiment using an apparatus with two identical gas container connected with a tube and placed in a calorimeter. In the initial state A, one of these containers is filled with air and the other one is evacuated. The state variables of the gas in its initial state are the volume V1, the pressure P1 and the temperature T1. If we open the valve separating the containers from each other, then the gas will expand and fill the evacuated container, reaching the final state B. The volume of the gas after expansion is denoted by V2 which is equal to 2 times its initial volume V1. The final pressure and temperature of the gas are denoted by P2 and T2 respectively. Since Joule was not able to measure any difference between the initial and the final temperature of the gas, that is T1 is equal to T2, the expansion of the air can be considered as an isothermal process. Then we can apply the first formula obtained for the change in entropy of an ideal gas, where the first term in the parenthesis vanishes because the temperature of the gas does not change. 
In the temperature volume diagram the isothermal free expansion of the air is represented by the horizontal line between its initial state A and its final state B. As a result, delta S is equal to the mass M of the gas times its specific gas constant Rs, times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the final volume V2 of the gas to its initial volume V1. We can also write the multiplicative factor of the logarithm as the amount of species N of the gas times the universal gas constant R. For a given amount of air measured in moles, the multiplicative factor is a positive constant. Since the gas doubles its volume by filling both the identical containers, the volumetric ratio V2 over V1 is equal to 2 and its logarithm is positive. The graph of the change in the entropy as a function of the volumetric ratio shows the entropy production represented by the logarithmic curve connecting the initial state A and the final state B. Since the logarithmic function is monotonic increasing, the entropy of the gas has maximum in the final state. Then the change in the entropy of the ideal gas during its free expansion is positive, that is its entropy increases. We conclude that the free expansion of an ideal gas is an irreversible process since it involves entropy production. In other words, this process cannot take place in the reverse direction and the air filling both the vessels cannot contract spontaneously such that it would fill only one of the containers, since the volumetric ratio was less than 1 making the change in the entropy negative. That is, the entropy of the gas would decrease during its isothermal contraction, which will not happen in nature. We note that the change in entropy could be calculated along a quasi-static path for a reversible isothermal expansion since the entropy is a state function depending only on the initial and the final states of the gas, but not the path of the process. However, as the entropy production during the free expansion of the air shows that the process of itself is not reversible. Another example will help us to study the entropy production in the case of heating bodies or liquids. Let us heat a body at a constant pressure in a reversible process by allowing the body to always absorb a small amount of heat while it is warmed up. Such an idealized process can be approximated by simmering water in a pot. As opposed to boiling, simmering can be a much slower process where the water is warmed by a small amount of heat released from the oven in a unit time. This process is illustrated in the pressure temperature diagram where the body is brought from its initial state A at the temperature T1 into its final state B at the temperature T2 while the pressure P is constant. Then the change in the entropy S of the body during its heating can be written as the integral of the reduced heat of the body from the temperature T1 to the temperature T2. Here the differential of the heat Q is equal to the mass M of the body, times the specific heat capacity Cp of the body for constant pressure, times the differential of its temperature T. By inserting this expression into the integral and performing the integration, we obtain m times Cp times the natural logarithm of the ratio of T2 to T1, provided the specific heat capacity can be approximated as a constant in the temperature range between T1 and T2. In the case of water, the specific heat for constant pressure has a very small change between the temperatures 0 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius. At 0 degree it is equal to 4.217 kJ per kilogram Kelvin, whereas at 20 degree it is given by 4.187 kJ per kilogram Kelvin. In linear approximation, its average in this temperature range is equal to 4.199 or about 4.2 kJ per kilogram Kelvin. If we heat 100 grams water from 0 degree Celsius or 273.16 Kelvin to 20 degree Celsius or 293.16 Kelvin, then the change in the entropy S of the water can be written as 0.1 kg times 4.2 kJ per kilogram Kelvin, times the natural logarithm of the ratio of 293.16 Kelvin to 273.16 Kelvin. This gives 29.67 Joule per Kelvin. That is, the increase in the entropy of 100 grams water is equal to about 30 Joule per Kelvin while it is heated from 0 degree Celsius to 20 degree Celsius. If we choose the entropy of 100 grams water at 0 degree Celsius as the zero point of the entropy of water, then we can state that the entropy of 100 grams water at 20 degree Celsius is equal to about 30 joule per Kelvin. Entropy production can also be studied in the case of mixing liquid at different temperatures. We have just determined the entropy S of 100 grams water at 20 degree Celsius for a zero point of 0 degree Celsius, and we found that it is equal to 29.67 joule per Kelvin. We can compute the entropy S of 50 grams water at 80 degrees Celsius by applying the same formula. Since the specific heat capacity Cp of water at 80 degrees Celsius is equal to 4.195 Joule per kilogram Kelvin, its approximation with the value of 4.2 still gives a relative accurate result when we substitute it into the formula of the entropy production.
then we can see that the entropy S of 50 grams water at 80 degrees Celsius is equal to 53.94 joule per Kelvin for the same zero point. Now we can determine the total entropy of the system which consists of the two separated fluids. The total entropy S1 is the sum of the entropy of the two liquids, and after substituting their computed values in the sum, we obtain 83.61 joule per Kelvin. If we mix these two separated fluids and measure the temperature of the mixture, we see that the 150 grams water has the temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Then the entropy S2 of the mixture can be determined by applying the same formula and the same specific heat capacity Cp for the water at 80 degrees Celsius. This gives 86.09 joule per Kelvin for the entropy S2. The difference between the entropy S2 of the mixture and the total entropy S1 of the separated fluids is equal to 2.45 joule per Kelvin which is greater than zero. This result shows that the mixing of water at two different temperatures increases the entropy of the isolated system consisting of the two fluids. The entropy production of this experiment demonstrates that mixing is an irreversible process, and its reverse does not take place spontaneously in nature. If we mix water at two different temperatures then the mixture never separates into two different regions with different temperatures in a spontaneous process. In the last example illustrating entropy production we study Carnot cycle. When this thermodynamic process was examined, we used the pressure volume diagram of the process to analyze the four steps of the cycle along two isotherms represented by the red hyperbolas and two adiabats represented by the yellow curves. The diagram shows that the thermodynamic states A and B are connected with the isotherm at the temperature T1, whereas the states C and D are connected with the isotherm at the temperature T2. Similarly, the states A and D are connected with an adiabat, and the states B and C are connected with another adiabat. The four steps of Carnot cycle can be seen in this table, which are the processes transforming the thermodynamic system from the state A to the state B, from the state B to the state C, from the state C to the state D, and from the state D to the state A respectively. As the pressure volume diagram shows, the first step of the cycle is an isothermal expansion of the working substance in the system at the temperature T1, where the initial volume VA of the substance is smaller than its final volume VB. Since this process is isothermal, the heat Q1 absorbed by the substance during its expansion is given by the product of the temperature T1 and the change in the entropy S of the system during the isothermal expansion. We already determined the later for an ideal gas, and we saw that the difference between the entropy S at the final state B and the initial state A of an isothermal expansion is equal to the mass M of the gas times its specific gas constant Rs, times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the final volume VB to the initial volume VA. As a result, the change in the entropy is positive in the first step of the cycle, that is the isothermal expansion of the working substance involves entropy production in the system. The second step of the cycle is an adiabatic expansion between the states B and C, where no heat is exchanged between the working substance and its surroundings, and the initial volume VB of the system is smaller than its final volume VC. Since there is no heat absorbed or rejected by the system, there is no change in the entropy S of the working substance and this step is an isentropic process. The third step of the cycle is an isothermal compression of the working substance at the temperature T2, where the initial volume Vc of the system is greater than its final volume Vd. In the isothermal compression of the working substance, the heat Q2 prime discarded by the system is given by the product of the temperature T2 and the change in the entropy S of the substance during this process. If we want to determine delta S for the isothermal compression, we can apply the same formula as in the first step. The only difference is that the initial volume of the system is Vc and its final volume is Vd. However, we also saw that the ratio of Vc to Vd is equal to the reciprocal of the ratio of Vb and Va in a Carnot cycle. The change in the entropy S is therefore given by minus the mass M times the specific gas constant Rs, times the logarithm of Va to Vb. In this case the change in the entropy of the working substance is negative, and its magnitude is the same as the increase in the entropy in the first step. The fourth step of the cycle is an adiabatic compression between the states D and A, where no heat is exchanged between the working substance and its surroundings, and the initial volume VD of the system is greater than its final volume VA. Since there is no heat absorbed or rejected by the system, there is no change in the entropy S of the working substance, and this step is an isentropic process. We can also study the heat transfer and the entropy production in a Carnot cycle by plotting the process variables in a temperature versus entropy diagram. In such a diagram the isothermal expansion and compression of the working substance are represented by the horizontal lines between the states A and B, and the states C and D at the temperatures T1 and T2 respectively. Similarly, the vertical lines between the states B and C, 
and the state's DNA at SA and SB represent the adiabatic expansion and compression of the working substance, which are isentropic processes. The heat Q1 absorbed by the working substance during its isothermal expansion is given by the area of the rectangle with the corners A, B, E and F. The heat Q2 prime rejected by the working substance during its isothermal compression is given by the area of the rectangle with the corners D, C, E and F. Since the work W prime delivered in the Carnot cycle is equal to the difference between the absorbed heat Q1 and the rejected heat Q2 prime, the area of the rectangle with the corners A, B, C and D in the temperature entropy diagram gives W prime. As a result, the thermal efficiency eta of the Carnot cycle defined by the ratio of the work W prime delivered by the system to the heat Q1 absorbed by the system is equal to the ratio of the area of the rectangle A, B, C and D to the area of the rectangle A, B, E and F. In the temperature versus entropy diagram, we can see that the greater the difference between the temperature T1 of the heat source and the temperature T2 of the cold sink is, the greater the ratio of the rectangular areas in the formula of the efficiency becomes. In other words, this diagram illustrates the fact that the efficiency eta is given by the ratio of T1 minus T2 to T1.